People love to travel, but they hate to be tricked or scammed or being taken advantage of during their travels. So here's some travel hacks slash travel tips for your upcoming vacation. We're the Honest Guides and most likely you came to our channel for those tips how not to get tricked. And the most common thing or the one everyone is asking for is prices, how not to get tricked on those. Now there's a great website, numbio.com, that I use quite frequently, especially if I go to a place I've never been to before. And it will show you prices of common goods, common services that people use on their travels. How much is a bottle of water? Well, the price may vary, but you can look at Numbio to get at least an idea what the normal price is, so you know if you're being overcharged. Just now, Honza went to a couple local stores here that are actually not local, but made for tourists. And instead of 20, 30 crowns, which would be the normal price, he was charged 120 crowns, which is around five euros. For a bottle of water, you're crazy. Well, I went to Numbio and I know what the normal price should be. So do you now, and not just the price of a bottle of water, you can also look what is the average salary in the place you're going to, how much is a meal in cheap restaurant, in expensive restaurant, or how much is a meal at McDonald's. And on top of that, you can actually compare two different cities. Check out Sydney versus Bucharest. You'll be very surprised at the differences. Of course, I'm gonna give you like a real life example that I actually experienced in Prague. And one was a girl from London. She walked out of a store with a full bag, one of these tourist mini markets. And I asked her, how much did she pay? And I could see the goods. And she said, well, around 2000 crowns. I said, well, that's your most expensive shopping list you ever did. And she said, no, I'm from London. London is much more expensive. When I converted the crowns into pounds, she was like, oh boy. I guess there's no need to introduce you to Wikipedia, but have you heard of Wiki Travel? Basically, it's the same thing, but it only regards to tourism, traveling, cool tips, cool spots, and so on. And once again, it is being edited by people that visit the site. Now, if you wanna check if the site actually works, if the tips are good, how about you check out Wiki Travel site for the city you live in? And if you find a mistake, just like on Wikipedia, you can correct it and adjust it. Now, don't rely on Wiki Travel as your only source for travel, but it can definitely be one of them. If there's one part of Wiki Travel that I always like to look at, it's the section "Stay Safe for Any City." Uh, and in Prague, it usually covers the topics that we also film about: exchange offices, taxis from the main train station, uh, ATMs, pickpocketing, scams on the street, and so on. Some people even link to our videos there. So whenever I go to a city I've never been to, I always check Wiki Travel and the "Stay Safe" part. If there's nothing there, it means I'm going to a pretty safe city, I guess. Now let's be honest, if there's one thing you really need for your travels, it's your phone and connection to internet. And just recently I discovered an app called Air Allo, which allows you to buy eSIM for your device in pretty much any country around the world. So you save the hassle of going to a store and buying a SIM card, then changing the SIM cards. And most phones can run a SIM card and an eSIM together. So just recently when I was in US and Jamaica, this app really helped me. Now make sure you compare the prices on the app with the prices from the providers or from the carriers they may differ but from my experience it was working just fine and you could set it up before you get to the country so right on the plane as you land it you turn it on and you're online so you can go to week travel numbio and so on now, if you want to avoid the internet, yet still stay connected with the world in terms of maps, make sure you download them to an offline storage before you go somewhere. Obviously, I don't need to introduce Google Maps, but there's even some cooler apps that you can use for map services. Like in Czech, we have Muppet.cz. They have a great app. Once again, you can download it to offline, and they're especially good for if you travel, you know, outdoorsy, if you do some treks and so on. Now, here's a comparison of a place I quite often go to in Romania. This is what it looks like on Google Maps, and this is what it looks like on the Muppy.cz. Obviously, there's many other map services, but these two are the ones that we, me and Honza, use the most, and this one we can really recommend for the Czech Republic. Now, one thing we use the most on Google Maps, and I see not too many people actually using it, are saving locations into your lists. 
So you can create a list for a city and safe places that you want to visit. Now, my map looks crazy. Now, the green flags are places I'm going to visit or want to visit or I received a tip for them. And the red hearts are places that I've already been to and I love them. <laughs> I will not share you my map, sorry. Now, the next tip is really important and essential and you need it. And it's called Slovnik. You don't know what it is? Well, because you don't have it. Slovnik means dictionary. If you're going to a foreign country and you don't speak the language, most likely in the Czech Republic, that will be the case, you better download an app to your phone that will help you understand. Now, obviously there's Google Translator. There's also in the iOS new system, a thing where you can just point your phone and it will translate things. But there are also dictionaries that you can download into your phone that are offline. Once again, if you have no internet, then you can use it. So you better have it when you go abroad. But if you are online, there's one tip we can give you and that's DeepL Translator. Honza described it as next level shit translating. So check it out. Another app that you really should get and we are most commonly asked about that is some weather app. I mean, usually your phone will give you an information like, is it gonna rain uh, 20, 30%? But if you get a radar app, it will give you a more accurate idea of what's gonna happen. Obviously, you can get the local app in Czech Republic that would be Meteoradar, or you can get a global one, which is actually also uh, run by a Czech guy, and that is Windy. It is very, very complicated app, but once you get through all the buttons, you eventually will find a radar that will tell you where it's raining and if it's gonna rain in the place where you are. One cool layer on the weather uh, app Windy that you can find in the millions of layers is actually webcams. And you can see what the actual weather looks like now around the world. My favorite webcam is here in Prague, pointed at the Charles Bridge and the Prague Castle. And you can also scroll through it, turning it into kind of a cool time lapse. Now, the following tip can save your life and uh, also your phone. Now, I hope you will never be in the life-threatening situation, but most likely you're gonna lose your phone, somebody's gonna find it, and you'll be wishing they will bring it back to you. For that, the iPhones have a cool feature that is called Medical ID. Now, you can actually make a phone call from an iPhone that is locked if the owner set it up an emergency contact. So you're trying to open an iPhone that is not yours and there's a medical ID, you click it and there are the emergency contacts that you can freely call from a locked iPhone. This feature was mainly intended so it can save lives because in the medical ID you can put your blood type, if you're allergic to something, what's your height, what's your weight and on top of that you can give the emergency contact which comes in handy if you lose your phone. Now, I actually find phones a lot around Prague and whenever it's an iPhone, I go to the medical ID and there's never the emergency contact. So please take your phone, put in your emergency contact, a person you can trust and do it for your friends and do it for your parents. It may save their phones. Another uh, cool tip app that we use in the Czech Republic is called Zachranka, uh, emergency app. And it uses regular emergency services that you can call by tapping your phone and it will send them and give them the exact location where you are. You can also start a video call, which comes in handy. And also there's a button that says, I cannot talk. Once again, I guess we can all imagine situations where that comes in handy. Let us know if you have something like that in the countries where you live. And if you really want to be safe in Czech Republic, Zachranka is the app to get. And last but not least, frequent viewers already know this tip, uh, but I will remind you that you can get the exact location of where you are in the Czech Republic if you need emergency by a number on a lamp post. So if you have no phone, no reception, nothing, but you can manage to call the emergency services, yet you don't know where you are, look up the six digit number on any lamp and they will pinpoint your location exactly on the spot. Now, obviously, one tip how not to get tricked is to read reviews on places you're about to visit. But reviews can be tricky. I mean, we've experienced it ourselves when we made a video about a place that actually bought positive reviews for themselves. Now, one tip is to check out more than just one site or app for the reviews. You can go to Google Maps, you can go to TripAdvisor, you can go to Yelp. In Czech Republic, you can go to Mapi.cz and so on and compare those. 
Now, if the reviewer only has one review written and it suddenly happens to be the place that he gave or she gave a five star, that can be fishy. Also, if the wording of the reviews are similar or they sound similar or they all talk about the same thing, once again, that can be a red flag. Now, I can give you an example of a place here in Prague that is my favorite pub. And on Google Maps, it has a 3.8 star review. Now, if I saw that abroad, I would never go there. That's a bad review. Yet here, it's my favorite place. So be careful with reviews. Maybe try the place on your own, unless thousands of people are writing it's a scam and they give it one star review, then maybe it's not worth trying. But once again, I just want to point out that reviews cannot always be trustworthy. So these were our travel tips, travel hacks, so you can stay safe on your travels. If you have some of your own, how about you share them with us and with other viewers in the comments below. Once you're down there, you can also give us a thumbs up if you like the video and you can subscribe to our channel. This was Honza Janek, we're the Honest Guides from beautiful Prague, Czech Republic. Looking forward to your visit. See you next week, ahoy. Now in the end, I'm gonna teach you how in Czech we would say a travel hack. Uh, there's no like specific translation for it, even though you can use some of the apps we recommended. But in Czech, a travel hack, we would call that cestovatelská vychytávka. Cestovatelská vychytávka, travel hack.